this is Catherine from Taking Tea with Catherine, and I am drinking some very nice rooibos tea in this lovely Sherlock Holmes mug. The rooibos tea is nice, but it's not stale, but a little bit older. I got it from a friend who went away, and she went away a while ago, so it's not super new, and neither are some of the books I'm going to talk about today. This is a haul, but it's not a haul from a few weeks ago, or well, some of it is, or just this month. It's over the course of over six months. So let's get started. Let's get started with one of the oldest books in this haul. And in theme with the mug, which was a Sherlock Holmes mug, I have Sherlock Holmes is Like. And this is a collection of basically essays using different characters, different historical figures, different all kinds of people, and comparing them to Sherlock Holmes or comparing Sherlock Holmes to them more like and it was actually pretty fascinating I'm almost done with it um, I was alerted to this because one of my friends has a chapter in here and it was fantastic and I love reading about Sherlock Holmes almost more than I love reading Sherlock Holmes stories it's really weird but anyway I love Sherlock Holmes and um, and I love nonfiction most of this haul actually all this haul is nonfiction because let's keep to a theme shall we all right, so another one that I've had for some time and I love, and I said I'm gonna start reading it when it gets nice out because it would pair well with the outdoors, but I haven't started yet, but I'm about to, is Around the World in 80 Trees. Isn't that beautiful? I bought it at the newly opened Shakespeare and Company, not the one in Paris, the one on the upper west side, the slightly upper west side. They used to have one there and a close, and they have one on the east side and it's been there still and they have lovely cafes. And I was just so glad to have that. And I'm, I just love reading about trees. That sounds weird because what is there to learn about trees from a book? Plenty. So I can't wait to get started. I don't know what's taking me so long. I'm a procrastinator, but I'm also reading a lot of different books. So there you go. So let's talk about another bookstore that's relatively new that I absolutely love. And I've gotten to go there a few times and I hate leaving there without taking something with me. It's just a beautiful bookshop and it is Books Are Magic in Brooklyn. If you have a chance to go there in Brooklyn, please do. So anyway, I got two vastly different books, I, mean, I suppose. This one's called How Poetry Can Change Your Heart. I also like reading about poetry almost more than I like reading poetry, similar to Sherlock Holmes. But um, it was a beautiful book. It's not a very long book. It goes into different kinds of poetry and why you can use it. And sometimes it's hard for people to get back into poetry if they've read it in school and it's gotten so formulaic and it's gotten kind of painful to read when it gets broken down and a little bit pretentious. So I was glad to have this. I, I thought it helped me jumpstart my interest in poetry. I've always had an interest in poetry, but I can always use more. There's only one problem, and it's probably more of a problem for me because I'm, I have terrible eyesight. But sometimes the way it's written in certain lighting, it could be a bit hard to, to read. So I had to use very bright lights when I was reading it, and that's my problem, it may be your problem too, just bear that in mind. It smells amazing, if that matters to you. It matters to me. Um, this is a book I haven't started yet, but I also got this from Books Are Magic called Little Panic. It looks to be a memoir about someone who grew up in New York and also has panic disorder or anxiety attacks, so on, which I relate to a little bit. And I like reading about New York. I, I'm from New York, I live in New York, and I relate to it very much. I like to read memoirs. I'm very interested in other people's lives, and especially because I don't always understand other people just from talking to them. Sometimes if you read the way they speak, the way they, you know, get into their life in a written manner, you can really sit down with them and not get distracted by other things. So I am looking forward to reading that book. I hope I can find it relatable. Or do I want to find it relatable? I don't know. We shall see, I'll let you know. Now here's two books from the same author and they're gorgeous. How to be a good creature and Tamed and Untamed by Cy Montgomery. And also Elizabeth Marshall Thomas in this one. Um, I don't know anything about this writer except for the fact that they write about um, animals and it's part memoir and part writing about animals. And I like to read about animals more than I like watching documentaries about animals, unless it's a cute little kitten thing. I love cats, but sometimes when I watch nature shows, 
you know what's coming. The hunting, the killing, I know it's nature, but I don't like watching it. Reading about it, I could probably deal with it more. And I have to admit, I was partially swayed by this cover. <laughs> it's beautiful. The inside, the inside photographs and work is um, mostly black and white, I think, but that's okay because I could fill in the color with my mind, right? Okay, so where are we now? Oh, did I mention I'm a bit of a Britophile? I like, some people say Anglophile, but I think that's a little narrow because to me, Britain, you know, Scotland, Wales, you know, bits of other parts are not necessarily England. So Anglophile is, like I said, narrow. Well, this book, Watling Street, is mostly, I think, England, but it covers a street that um, has been around in the UK for many, many years, and it goes by different names as it runs along. But this writer travels to the different parts um, of Watling Street and speaks of its history, speaks of its people, its culture, and I love it. I love that. I love, I love travel books. I love travel memoirs. I like um, Bill Bryson, for instance. Um, he could be quite humorous, and it, you just feel like you're with him. This feels like that too, maybe a little more trippy, because there's, there's some odd characters he runs into that you say, wow, that's weird. But, but then you also feel like you're traveling with him, and I love that. So um, let's see, what do we have left here? Oh, speaking of, speaking of the UK, this is one of my favorite writers, Tom Cox. This is 21st century yokel. And I've just started it and I enjoy it already. I've read most of his books. Um, I know he's written about music, so I haven't read about that, but I've read his cat books. So um, he basically collects cats, as it were, uh, just as most people who love cats tend to have quite a lot of them. I don't, when I say he collects it, I don't mean that he's a hoarder, but I mean, he just tends to have a lot of cats. And I think right now he currently only has two, like me. Um, so that's, that's not so much of a collection. But anyway, over the years, he's had quite a few cats and he's written about the personalities, as it were, of all of them. And they're, they're just adorable. But it's not just cutesy. Um, it's very humorous. At the same time, between his books and his blog and his Instagram, Facebook, etc., he's greatly into walking around natural things. He's lived in London before, but you could tell he just prefers nature. He prefers taking these long, long walks. And in England and the UK, there, there's such a possibility for that. There's so much walking that is encouraged. Whereas in um, the United States, I mean, I live in New York, we walk a lot, but there's a different, it's different to walk in, in just around the city. It's a different type of walking. It's still enjoyable. Central Park is the closest we get really to nature. <laughs> and sometimes you don't want to see the nature that you run across in Central Park. But um, aside from, you know, actually getting to trails when you're in the United States, you still have to drive to everything. It's not as accessible if you're not a driver and if you just want to walk around and run into sheep as he does and make friends with the local sheep and the badgers, etc. So I just love that explanation of, of what it's like to live in that way, which I don't relate to but I would love to. And I also love reading about his family, especially his father, who he writes in all caps. So you feel like he's basically shouting everything he says. You, could, you can hear it in your head. And it reminds me of, um, I don't know if you've ever read uh, Prayer, I think it's Prayer 4 or Prayer, I think it's Prayer for Owen Meany. Anyway, it's a, it's, a, it's a book that I read years ago and everything he says is in all caps. So I kind of first thought that when I read it, but now he's starting to take on a life of his own. Very, very interesting. So what do I have left? One more. Speaking of nature, Foxes Unearthed. Now, I haven't started this yet, so I can't really say much of what it's about. Um, the back says that the fox is a controversial creature in Britain, perceived variously as a beautiful animal, a cunning rogue, a vicious pest, and a worthy foe. Exploring town and country, Literature and hunting, facts and fables, Foxes on Earth reveals our rich and complex relationship with one of our most loved and most vilified wild animals. I think, if I'm not incorrect, I think that fox hunting has become illegal in the UK. I hope so. Um, I think that's kind of a cruel practice. I know they had their reasons in the past, but I don't like the idea of it. And I've always been a fan of foxes. I know they can cause trouble in certain respects. 
but I've always had, I've been to London a number of times. I don't want to tell you how many times I've been to London. I'm quite obsessed with London. But, um, and everybody I spoke to in, who lives there has seen foxes in their garden, on the street. Friends of mine who visited see them in garbage cans or whatever they call it over there. And I have never, to my knowledge, actually seen a fox in the wild or in the city at all. And it's kind of an obsession of mine. When I was in a train on a recent trip a couple of years ago, coming back from Hastings, I think it was, um, which is in the southeast of England, um, the, um, you know, the window view affords a lot of great views. I saw sheep, for sure. I might have seen a fox. I thought I saw a fox. It could have been a dog. So um, it's kind of the elusive, the unicorn to me, you know? Um, and I mean, maybe I've seen them in zoos, but I've never seen them just running into one. And you don't see that in New York that I know of. I have seen possums or opossums if they're Irish. I don't know. But um, I've seen pigeons. I've seen all manner of birds. I've seen raccoons, even outside of Central Park. But I have not seen foxes. And it's become rather an obsession for me to finally see fox. So if I can't see it yet, I'm going to read about it. Sometimes I like to read about things that I've already done, so I feel like I'm reliving it. Sometimes I just like to read about things that I either will never do or haven't yet done. Anyway, so that's a little brief tour. I have actually acquired more nonfiction books um, since I believe November, which is how much time this encompasses, but I can't think of what I've done with them. If I have, I will feature them in the future. And I will also feature, speaking of featuring, the other books I've gotten in um, recent times. I've gotten some fiction, some short stories, which I guess is fiction as well. Um, essays, kind of like the nonfiction short story. Anyway, I've gotten a number of poetry books, um, mostly compilations, but hey, they're wonderful. Um, and I just, I love to share what I'm reading or what I have or what I've read. And I hope you enjoy my little tours and my little conversations. And I hope you enjoy your cup of tea. And I will see you next time. Bye.